Hello, I am the Red Monk's evil brother. Headband Monk. And it is a fashion statement, by the way. And today's topic is how time traveling to either the past or the future will instantly kill you from air embolism. And what that is, is air in your bloodstream. Not only you'd get air in your bloodstream that would just block off your heart and kill you very quickly, it'd also get into your brain and like everywhere. And you just fucking die if you try to time travel. No matter how you time travel, there's no way to get around you dying from air embolism. Now, this is from my philosophy of time travel, which is 100% right, by the way, because I am always right about everything. And to get into how time traveling will instantly kill you from air in your blood, we have to go into my philosophy, which is scientifically proven to be 100% correct. And the metaphor I have, which I have used this before because this is an awesome metaphor and I got this for $5, the boat. So let's start from the start. There is one uh, period of actions and reactions. It is just one line. There are no other possibilities and everything is caused by previous actions and everything that is going to happen is already set and is already going to be caused by what has already happened. There is no randomness. There is no like, oh, just because I choose your brain even though it's you know, slightly more complicated, is just a computer, is a ton of neurons reacting for the same response. And if you could, you know, graph every single like atom, every single neuron in your brain, you could know what you're going to do. If you could map every atom in the entire universe, you could tell what is going to happen before it even happens. That's a lot of processing power, and that's a lot of info. And it's really hard to guess before any of it really happens because, you know, the movements are very sporadic. But what's going to happen in the future is caused by what has already happened and what has happened. It's just a singular line. It's like we are riding a boat. You're just on it and it just goes. It doesn't randomly go. Wherever the, nor wherever the nose is pointing is wherever the boat's going to go. It's not going to randomly just... Okay, I want to go this way now. There's no randomness to it, right? Every single uh, occurrence is an effect of a recent cause, and every uh, cause is the effect of uh, another cause. It's just a series of actions and reactions. There's this one scene from Back to the Future where uh, the Einstein guy, whatever his name was, he just drew a line... That was supposed to be the universe, which what it is. And he just drew another line. Now, if we're talking about time travel, we have to talk about Back to the Future. Uh, because <laughs> it is so much merit. But that's a size the point. He is fucking wrong. There is only one line. It's just a series of actions and reactions. It's one line. It's one boat we're riding. Right? And of course it is, it's just our uh, place stacked on each other over and over and over again, right? Now that's, they call time the fourth dimension, right? And they call time the fourth dimension because just like you stack a ton of flat 2D objects on each other, right? Just if you keep on stacking an infinite amount of 2D objects on each other over and over and over again, you get the third dimension, which is height, right? So if the second dimension is uh, length and width, and you just add a ton of length and width, and you just keep on stacking it like a book over and over and over again, you eventually get the third dimension, which is height, right? And the fourth dimension is our current existence, the third dimension, stacked on each other over and over and over again. And that is time, right? If you were able to stack a ton of uh, 3D objects on each other, 
over and over and over again, uh, in the fourth dimension, you get a series of events. And our entire universe is just one uh, 4D object. It is just one 4D object. It is just one start of events, the start of the universe, Big Bang, whatever you believe in, whatever the start of the universe is, which caused everything. If you were able to map everything at the start of the universe, you can tell how it's going to end. It will take one hell of a computer and one hell of an equation, but you can tell. You can tell. So, let's say you are... Let's use this book. Let's say you are... Let's say each page is just uh, an existence in the third dimension. Like, this is a day. This is the next day, right? It's just the same day, right? Each book is a day. You could... Uh, just jump from page to page, right? That sounds totally possible, right? But you have to understand that the fourth dimension, the entire universe, is just one fourth dimensional object. It is just one book. It is just one series of events. So let's say, let's take it down. So each page is uh, a situation at a certain time frame in the third dimension. Like this is today, that's tomorrow, that's the day after, right? And let's say you're on this page and you want to go to 1992. You could just somehow jump if it's possible. I don't know the science behind it. You could just uh, jump to this page, which is 1992. But it is an object in the fourth dimension. Whatever this page is, it is the page that caused uh, this page to form, which is 1994, which caused this page to form, which is 1995, and it's just these actions and reactions. So you have no change on the third dimension. You have no change on the present. Let's say if you go, went back in time and stabbed your grandfather, nothing would happen. The next page, he would just be right there because it's an object each page is independent from each other, right? Because you need to keep on stacking the object, right? To create the fourth dimension, you have to uh, repetitively stack pages. So you repetitively have to stack uh, independent uh, situations. So you need to individually stack full third dimensions that just are stills. You just keep on stacking them the next one has a slight difference. The next one has a slight difference in the future. The next one has a slight difference in the future. And that is the time travel. So let's say if you went back here and boom, you just, you went here and you just destroyed this time. You just ripped out the page. This page is still here, right? And it's already, all of it already exists. It's already one line. So no matter how many pages you rip out, that short uh, span of existence will go away, but there is still always the next page. They're independent of each other. Each uh, frame of existence is independent of each other. Now, to get in how you would instantly die from air embolism, we have to kind of break it down a bit. Now, the fourth dimensional object of our entire universe is, uh, it is fluid. There's no uh, frames to it. But I will uh, dissect each individual moment into a frame, right? I will uh, dissect each individual moment into a frame, but technically it is a fluid object. It is a f brick. Like, I could rip out a chunk but there's no, you know, independent pages. So, you would die from air and the literalism because... Okay, let's say you are from... Let's say you are from 2019, which is this page. And you want to travel back to the Wild West. 1982. Wait. 1882 you travel back to 1882 in boom so you just jump from page from 2019 you just hop it in your time machine 
and you end up on this page and you start riding through the pages as time passes. But you are currently in a place. You are currently on Earth. And in the next frame of Earth, if nothing was there, there was a ton of air. And that air will just appear to where you are. Right? You just have a ton of air right where you're standing, which will get into your bloodstream, which will get into your brain, and you just fucking die right then and there. There's no escaping it. There is no way to time travel without instantly dying, right? Because let's say you get to this fucking page, and you get right here. And then the next frame happens. You're right there, but there's air right where you're standing. And that air gets into your uh, blood, and it clogs up your arteries, and you croak. You fucking die. So... Even then, even then for the future, let's say you are in 2019 and you want to travel to when the Earth finally burns from global warming. You could just, uh, you know, hop like 200 years in the future and there would be water there because everything's underwater. So you're right here and this is the frame you take up. This is the area you're in and uh, the next uh, frame... There's something there. It's, there's not. It's not just empty space. There's always air occupying that space. So, uh, you in the air, you don't fuse, but you know you share the space, and of course the air will just fly out. You know, the air will just zoom out. There's a lot of empty space in between molecules. So, if you were just placing a brick of air, the air would just, you know, move out of the way. But since there are air in the actual space of your body that air will you know go inside your lungs it can't just go through your skin and you just die the next frame i mean i think air embolism is a slower death but if you get like air into your brain like you're with jesus you're fucking dead now this is true now you might think why not just travel to a place that is, is a vacuum, you know? Let's say you just said, okay, so I'll instantly die on Earth because there's air there. So you travel to a vacuum. And uh, it's a really long way to describe it, but there's no way to survive being inside of a vacuum. You just die. You know, because uh, your, your body is meant to be in a balance, right? So if you just go into a vacuum where there's no air to uh, go inside your uh, blood arteries and kill you, you are in a vacuum and like all of your uh, body acid, all your, your eyeballs will just get sucked out because the air pressure actually keeps your eyeballs inside your head. So you need that air to survive the next, you know, four or three seconds but that air can't be there for the first like three milliseconds unless you'll die i guess you could have a contraption that would create a vacuum for a second that you show up and then get rid of the vacuum i guess that's a, that's because that's an easy fix the point is you'd fucking die from air embolism It's a fashion statement.